And <coughs> we uh, are all certain that we're going to destroy Iraq and we're going to escape this bloodbath without hardly a scratch. Praise God. But the worst thing has not started yet, and that's the ground war. And the crazy man has already proved this week how crazy he is. Setting the whole world on fire, he is destroying the environment of the earth over there in many countries. It is said this week that he is destroying the drinking water of Saudi Arabia and now he's polluting the air and God only knows what he'll do to India and, and Africa and many parts of those nations with all that stuff that's coming down on them. And, uh, <coughs> and yet we've still got to get him out of some heavily fortified places that he has made himself strong in. Amen. And I'll just kind of speculate this morning before I start preaching, but uh, I do believe that when we get our armies within reach, right now our armies are out of reach, but I do believe that when we get our armies within reach, he will hit our armies with biological weapons. He said he will. So far he's done everything he says he's going to do. He's hit Israel and the crazy man intends to do exactly what he says he's going to do. Amen. Praise God. Now I want us to notice in the 44th verse of these this man had a dream and this dream I heard a, a man on the talk show last night laugh about this man. He made the statement of this that <clears throat> it couldn't be Babylon coming back to power because when Babylon was ruled, it wasn't ruled by Arabs. It was ruled by Babylonians. Praise God. Evidently, he doesn't think the Roman Empire is in place today. And uh, I would like to tell him that Caesar is dead. But the Roman Empire is definitely in place today. All of these things do not come back to the original state. It is a spirit of the thing that God recognizes and, uh, and until God destroys it, not us, not the United States, not any other army in the world, but until God destroys it, that thing will exist. Amen. And so, <clears throat> uh, the, the power of the Roman Empire is here with us present as started with the same mind as started. The Babylonian Empire is with us as started with the same mind that was started. And until God destroys these things, they're going to be. Amen. Praise God. But in the 44th verse, uh, looking at this uh, image, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this image. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and the head of it was gold, and the chest of it was um, silver, and the thighs of it was brass, and the legs of it was iron, and the feet of it, was mixed with iron and clay. Now, I personally believe that iron and clay is what's called today conservatives and liberals. That's what I believe it is. Liberals and conservatives will never come together. You can try to make them coexist. You can try to make them uh, uh, mix if you want to, but they're diametrically opposed to each other. Amen. And, they, and they're not just in the United States, they're worldwide. They're that way in thought, in leadership. Amen. However, if you've noticed something, that there has been a strong tre uh, uh, trend since Margaret Thatcher went into office of them um, coming back to 
a very conservative type of rule over all the nations. And I believe that Russia will be taken over very shortly by the army in Russia. It's the only way they're going to be able to restore order. Amen. So the thing, the whole thing is set in motion and started its progress. And it's none other than God says, I'm going to call the nations together. And he's calling them together for one reason. He's tired of them. He's sick of them. And he's fixing to do his own thing now. For the last 15, 20 years, folks have, even in this nation and are, and, and in the last 10 years, have laughed at God as though he was a joke. And they have said, if there's a God, where's he at? Never ever looking in their Bible to find out where he's at. He rules the nations. And uh, if we have been wise in the last 15, 20 years, we could have seen him knocking the kings off the throne and setting the ones he wanted up to do his will. There's been a change of kings all over the world so fast that uh, we have just got used to it thinking, oh, well, they knocked him off, they got him another one. But I want to tell you what, God is putting in ruler and leadership those that will do what he has said he wants done. He puts it in their mind and puts it in their heart, and the Bible says he causes them to do it. Praise God, because he's God. He's God. Hallelujah. And it's about time this world finds out he's God. And he's still sitting on the throne. He's still healthy. He hasn't, as far as I know, even had a sick spell. As far as I know, nothing has ever happened to his mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nobody has ever proved to me that uh, he's had a little problem with his mind. Hallelujah. Somebody said God's dead. You know what I said? If he's dead, then show me his death certificate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that people have swallowed a whole lot of garbage in the last 15 years. They need a good regurgitation to cleanse their system. Praise God. Now, when he sees all of these, these uh, are nations. The first is Babylon. The second is the Medes, the Persian. The, sec uh, the third being the Grecian Empire. And the fourth being the Roman Empire. And all of these things have come to pass. They're not things that we look forward to. These are things that are already past. Until we get to the feet. It's the time now of the destruction of the image. Or the destruction of the nations. Praise God. Praise God. And <clears throat> then he said, in the days of these kings, Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? <laughs> I want to work on that for a little bit this morning. They have always thought, and the reason why the Jews miss Messiah, is because they was looking for Messiah to come and set up his kingdom here on earth. That's why they missed him. They wanted to be the ones that ruled over all the earth and all these things. And so they totally missed him. Let me tell you something. I don't believe that God could be overpowered in no wise. But had Jesus Christ set up his kingdom then and the world existed as long as it has now, uh, there have been a lot of troubles. Amen. Not only that, you and I wouldn't be saved. Praise God. And so Jesus Christ had something so far 
superior in mind that these people could never hook up to it. Amen. And in John the third chapter, he begins to explain to the people of his day what he was going to do. In St. John the third chapter in the fifth verse, there was a man that came to Jesus at night. He wanted to be a secret disciple. Praise God. Uh, personally, I don't want to be a secret disciple. I, I said, I've had folks that say, well, I'd like to be baptized when church ain't going on. I don't want folks to see me get baptized. That's all right. I'll baptize you. Uh, Brother Jesse said he wants to be baptized in the river. That's fine. Uh, just, just as soon as he tells me, I'll take him out and baptize him in the river. Praise God. I'm going to buy me a pair of waders. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, <clears throat> I know, Sister Bonnie, I'm not going to get cold. <laughs> Praise God. I love what Sister Bonnie told me last night. Because I've seen them do this for years, 40 years years. I'm older than 40, whether you believe it or not, but I've seen them do it for 40 years. Praise God. When I was a youngster, uh, and me and a youngster, six, seven, and eight years old, I've seen them break ice. You know where our baptistry tank was? It was out behind the church. So this time, the year when you wanted to get baptized, we went out there, the men did, with hatchets and broke the ice up. And we baptized you. But now we're worried about putting a heater in the water in the water in the church. Somebody said, well, we don't have to live like they did back then. We got modern, we had modern means then too. But we really had the power of God then too. And Sister Bonnie come up and told me last night, you don't need to put a heater in that tank. Now there's a woman, I, I'm not going to ask her how old she is in front of everybody, she might not want to tell me, but I can tell by looking, she's got a few years on her. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I ain't saying nothing. I know how to get in trouble with a woman. Hallelujah. Praise God. But she come up last night and let me know that if you go in that baptistry tank right, you don't have to worry about the temperature of that water. Hallelujah. She went in that baptistry tank right. You know something? When she came out of that water, she came out of it right too. She was speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you go in that baptistry tank right, you'll come out of it right. If you go in there with reservations, you'll come out with reservations. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe that if you go in there, you won't feel the temperature of that water. You say, well, what are you putting on rubber boots for? Uh, I'm not getting baptized. I've been baptized 1,700 times so far. I was in the baptistry tank one night with Sister Vivian. She's not here this morning. And bless God, she wasn't happy that I got her soaking wet. She's going to make sure she got me. She got me over in the corner, and I couldn't get out of it, and she started her hands. Woo! 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 And I mean, by the time we climbed out of there, there wasn't any part of me that was any drier than her. <laughs> Praise God. I've been baptized plenty of times. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And I don't mind it. I enjoy it. <clears throat> but uh, I'll still put on a pair of boots. That way if Brother Jesse goes in right, he won't get cold and I won't either. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, <clears throat> Jesus uh, had a fellow come to him secretly. He wanted to serve God secretly. 
I like those people just like to do it openly, but if you want to do it secretly, we'll do it secretly. However you want to do it, till you get enough God, you don't care if it's in open or secret. Hallelujah. Just, uh, I had a doctor's wife that wanted to do it secretly. But after she got the Holy Ghost, she couldn't keep it a secret. I baptized her one Sunday afternoon. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, she called me back from Ohio and said, Brother Elder, I got the Holy Ghost tonight. And Brother, I can't remember his name, Hugh Rose's church. Praise God. And uh, when she got back, she didn't keep it a secret. You got to go tell it on the mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> this guy come to Jesus by night. He, he knew he needed to be saved. He was already saved. He was already saved as far as the Jews was concerned. As far as religion was concerned. But he knew something was missing. Even though he was supposed to be saved. So he came to Jesus by night. And Jesus looked at him and said in the fifth verse, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now remember Daniel said, There our God is coming, and he's going to bring in a kingdom you guys can't get to. You kings of the earth can't destroy. You can't get to this kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to tell you something this morning. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. And he has brought in a kingdom. That's here. Praise God. He said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born to the Spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I say unto you, you ought to be or you might be. Huh? No, he didn't say that at all. Jesus said, you've got to be born again. Somebody said the words must. That just simply says you have to. That's the bottom line of simplicity there. Somebody said, well, you know, they're so simple. I'm going to tell you what, you're not so smart. You're so smart you can't find out what the simple is. You better get to the bottom line of this thing. Uh, I could say some words this morning that you wouldn't hardly know what I was saying either, but that's not the cause to be here this morning. Amen. Praise God. The, the reason this morning is to minister and communicate. Hallelujah. Then Jesus went on to say, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and where there it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Did you know that's what happened on the day of Pentecost? Said it came in like a mighty rushing wind. That's the way the Holy Ghost is. You can't tell where it's going to go next and what it's going to do next. No more than you can the wind. If you lived in Kansas, everybody ought to live in Kansas at least five years. They'd find, a, they'd find out a state that uh, is different than any state they've ever lived in. Just because the wind in Kansas is out of the south this morning don't mean a thing. You just wait and come here this afternoon. And if you're working on houses like I do a lot, you might find it softly out of the south this morning and gently cool out of the west this afternoon and extremely cold out of the north tonight. All in one day. And the coldest wind I've felt so far this year is out of the east. Praise God. Uh, you don't know which way the wind goes. So is the Holy Ghost. I've been preaching to people and people I didn't even think would get the Holy Ghost come to the altar and got it. 
I've seen people come up the altar, and I said to myself, well, they're probably not much use worrying about them too much. And lo and behold, the one I thought might get the Holy Ghost walked off, didn't get nothing, and they got the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Go show we're not God. We don't even think like God thinks. Hallelujah. His ways are far above our ways. Praise God. But he said there's a kingdom. That Daniel said that there's a kingdom coming in. And I want to work on that kingdom. You want to turn to Romans this morning. The 14th chapter and the 17th verse. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. We have religious people who had one in, uh, in uh, the revival meetings this week. And they seem to think that if you're, you, you have the spirit of God. And are blessed by God. Uh, you, you have a nice car in the garage, nice furniture, nice home, and plenty of groceries in the deep freezer. I wonder what they're going to do with the beggar that sit at the gate of Lazarus. The rich man lifted up his eyes in hell, but they found that beggar didn't have any meat or anything to drink over there in the kingdom of God. It isn't, honey, what kind of clothes you wore to church this morning. And it's not what you've got in your refrigerator at home. And it's not what, how well you drink. It's have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost since you I suppose to believe if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is a sign of an unbeliever. You can get mad at me if you want to. I didn't say that. The Bible did. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the mailman. You get mad at your mailman for bringing you bills? Hello? I'm just delivering you the mail this morning. Praise God. I'm just leaving you the letter this morning. Praise God. That's what the Bible said. Have you received, when Paul in the 19th chapter of Acts asked them people, have you received the Holy Ghost since, 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 since you believed? They said, we not so much as heard of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's all right. Ain't nothing wrong about that, but you're hearing about it now. And the Bible said in the sixth verse, said, Paul laid his hands on them and prayed, and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues, since they believed. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now, that's just one verse. I can, I can hit about ten more real quick with that, but... But uh, uh, he said that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But this is the reason why I'm glad I've got the Holy Ghost. But righteousness, oh, there's a lot of folks don't like that. They say they got the Holy Ghost, but they don't have righteousness. Now something's wrong. Holy Ghost brings in righteousness. If, if you've got a Holy Ghost in you, then it ought to make you holy. Ghost simply means spirit. I'm going to tell you what the difference is between the spirit of God and the Holy Ghost. A lot of folks don't believe there's any difference. I don't care what they believe. I could care less what they believe. The difference with the spirit of God is it's omnipresent. It can deal with the sinner. That's why they come to an altar and get saved. Praise God. It can come upon you at night and minister to you whether you're saved or not saved. Praise God. But the reason why your Bible says Holy Ghost instead of 
Holy Spirit like the schools of theology made it. The schools of theology made it Holy Spirit. But your Bible said Holy Ghost because that word ghost is the spirit of the deceased one. And I want to tell you, the spirit of the deceased one is in me. Colossians 1 and 27. Let me give you the mystery of the church, which is Christ in you. Now, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't have Christ in you. I'm not saying Holy Spirit. I'm saying Holy Ghost. Baptized with the Holy Ghost. When you're baptized with the Holy Ghost, you speak with other tongues. Praise God. That's the sign. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What are you preaching about, Brother El? The kingdom that's going to be outside of the kingdom of men, of the kings of the earth. You're not, Daniel said, you, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, being the head of this thing, all the boys that follow you won't never hurt this kingdom. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hallelujah. I'm sorry if I get excited about it, but I'm in it, you see, and I, I've got revelation of it, and you just can't have revelation of this and not get excited about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, righteousness. I like righteousness. So I have no problem. Peace. I love peace. The older you get, the more you want peace, Sister Character. I, I can't stand kids fighting in the house. My wife, she's still... My wife is still a referee. I come in the house and I got a 19-year-old a and a 17-year-old in the house. If you don't have one, you need to shout and run the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they're in there with their mother. And she said... get the more I like peace Amen. I walk in that house I said shut up what's wrong around here they don't even answer you can just hear bedroom door boom, boom, boom. so I go sit down on the couch and get the newspaper out and read it because I like peace I like peace. The older I get, the more peace I want. So I call you up and say, Daddy, Daddy. I say, yes. Well, Daddy will pray for you and hang up. They're all grown up now. They can just do it on their own. Yeah, that's what they left home over. They wanted to do it on their own. Praise God. Uh, I must be preaching some other way now. Praise God. <laughs> I like peace. I like it when I lay down at night. There's no war between God and me. I like it, you know. When I read the Bible and I see how I'm supposed to dress as a man that I have obeyed the Bible and my conscience is right between God and me. I love peace. Peace, oh beautiful peace. I love peace. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, sometimes I don't go hunting with guys anymore because they're like kids. They can't make up their mind which end of the field they want to hunt on. So uh, I don't hunt with them anymore because I like peace. Praise God. I can't stand this fussing and carrying on. It, uh, you know, anyhow, I'll try to get off this and move on. And I sure like joy. Uh, every once in a while, I get a bundle of joy that comes home. Just a little over two years old. Praise God. Him and Grandpa gets along. We don't even argue. He says, Papo, can I? And I say, yeah. <laughs> All right, Grandma, watch out. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, laugh all you want to. This old man will look at him and say no to. And <laughs> he about killed me a week ago. I told him no, and big old tears got in his eyes, and he looked at me, and I wanted to say yes, but I stuck with no. Praise God. Hallelujah. I like joy. Oh, I love joy. There's a joyful thing living in the house with a saved wife. And it's joyful when you come to church and you can lift up your hands and you haven't been sinning today. Amen. Haven't been chasing women on Saturday night and trying to sing the praises of God on Sunday morning. Hello. Mm, or chasing men on Saturday night. Hello? Some don't chase them physically, they chase them mentally. Can't walk by the Playboy or Playgirl magazine. Got secret things hidden under their mattress. Ain't no secret. There ain't nothing done in secret. There's an eye that sees everything. Praise God. And I'll tell you something else. One of these days when you stand before the throne, he said, then shall he make all secrets made known. Even your wife's going to find out what you didn't think she'd ever find out. He's going to make all secrets made known. So the best thing to do now is just get it all together so when you come to church, you can really run the aisles. When you, and when you, you know, when you run them, it feels like the fire of God's burning you up while you're going. I like joy. Do I like joy? I hate sad things. I, I went to a funeral the other day, and I felt plumb good in that funeral outside of feeling bad about the one that died. Somebody said, why is that, brother? Because I didn't have to preach it. I hate preaching funerals. I, 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 I kind of like preaching funerals for the saints, especially the ones I know that really was on fire for God when they died. But, but uh, I still don't enjoy a funeral. Amen. But, Joy. I love joy. I wonder how many of you. I'm not talking about fun. I'm talking about joy. The world has fun and the church has joy. Yeah. Fun's only a few seconds. You know what fun calls for? More money. Yeah. Whoo! That thing swung me around and I lived through it. I want to do it again. Okay, two bucks and a half again to see if you'll live through it again. There's a lot of difference between fun and joy. Hallelujah. I've got joy, joy, joy in my soul. <laughs> almost getting ready to go here. Whoo, hallelujah. I could almost forget the rest if it wasn't important. Joy. 
What are you talking about, Brother Elder? This kingdom that nobody else can get to. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I wonder how many of you want in that kingdom this morning. Praise God. <laughs> I made up my mind. I'm in. I'm in to stay. Not, but you, you want to know where this peace and joy is? You want to know where this kingdom of God is? It's in the Holy Ghost. It's in the Holy Ghost. That's where it's at. Praise God. In the 15th chapter and the 50th verse. Hmm. Must wrote that one down wrong. But anyhow, this verse said that the kingdom of God was not flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. No way can you get the flesh and blood in the kingdom of God. Now, I've got to stop here because I could keep on going all the rest of this morning on the kingdom of God. You see, I can go over there uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Let me show you a great mystery. We shall put off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible. What are you talking about? Lay flesh and blood down, pick up my spiritual body I'm going to live in forever and take off. Because flesh and blood can't get in. So therefore, no king on this earth can hurt this kingdom. He can't get in. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, preach a mystery to some, I can tell by looking. Now Daniel said, there was a stone. Uh, I, I didn't get a bunch of scriptures lined up this morning, but Jesus said upon this rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is known as the rock. When you go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, they're uh, talking about these being in samples and Moses striking the rock, which was Christ. He is the stone that was hewed out of the mountain. I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about the stone, and then we're going to talk about the mountain. Hallelujah. You know, some folk walk in here and look around and say, well, this church ain't very big. Well, honey, just because you've seen this in here, there's no sign you've seen the church. <laughs> Come back tonight, you'll see more if that's what's impressing you. I hope what I'm preaching this morning is impressing you more than all the people you see on pew. Praise God. Hallelujah. The stone. There was a stone that was hewed out of the mountain. I want to tell you something. The mountain of God is Zion, which is the church, and it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. Bro Brother uh, Wilson said that the church he comes out of running about 1,000 now. Brother Westbrook's church is running over 900 now. Uh Brother Cornwell's church in Wichita, I don't know what it runs, somewhere between three and 800. Amen. Uh, we got several churches in Kansas are running upwards now to 200. Praise God. And uh, we're not near as old of a district as the rest of the UPC. Hallelujah. Give us another 25, 30 years. I don't think it's going to take that long. <laughs> I see the Lord beginning to shoo them in the church now. <laughs> Looks like you just kind of say, get in there while you can. <laughs> you better hurry. <laughs> you want to be saved? Yeah. You better get in there. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You see, uh, he's the stone that was hewed out of the mountain. Turn to Revelations, the 19th chapter this morning. I want to tell you, Jesus is more than a baby wrapped up in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. 
You know what they're going to have him doing pretty soon? In a few more weeks, they're going to have him hanging on a cross dead. That's the Roman Empire. They, they still got him two times a year. <laughs> they get him born the 25th of December every year and they kill him every Easter. Lord, help me to be nice this one. I wish to God apostolics knew what paganism was. And that's something you, you get the Savior born every year and you kill him every spring. He's been through more births and deaths than anybody you ever heard of. They're they going to hang him on the cross here in a few more weeks and kill him again. I want to tell you something. They ain't killing nothing. <laughs> they don't even know where he's at. He's riding high. <laughs> Woo! I said he's riding high right now. He's riding on the wings right now. He's looking down there saying, mm hmm, why don't you do this? You know? I don't think I'd take too many more of those things coming to Tel Aviv. Why don't you go over there and. Praise God. You ought to read how many times I read in this morning in the Bible, just getting this lesson prepared for you, that he said, and I'll put it in their heart, and I'll, I'll say to them to do this, and I'll put it in their mind to go. and Time to sit down and read your Bible and see who's running this world. Hallelujah. In Revelations, the 19th chapter, and the 11th verse, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful. <laughs> He's faithful. You know what? You can rely upon this Bible. Oh, 10, 15 years ago, everybody's laughing at this Bible. Yeah, yeah. And you know what Revelations is? It's a mythology. It's an allegory. It's a... My God, you could just get into all kind of theological things and uh, philosophies. But I'll tell you what it is. It's the Word of God. And it's true. And it's faithful. If you want to put your confidence in something you can trust in, you better get in that. He's faithful. He's faithful. Uh, he's coming on time. Somebody said, well, I'll tell you what. Since Israel became a nation, everybody in here has got something they, they can't get away from. You can't get away from it. since Israel became a nation. This generation, this generation, this generation shall not pass away till you see the coming of the Son of Man. You're not getting out of that. That's scripture. That's not something I concocted. Hallelujah. So since Israel became a nation, there's only one generation till they see the coming of the Son of Man. Praise God. Praise God. You can't get out of it, folks. It's faithful. He's faithful. He don't lie. And he don't play games. And he don't speculate. I speculate, a lot of others speculate, but he don't miss. He just hits, bang, 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 every time he hits it right straight on the head. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he's faithful. That's what's on him. And he's true. Oh, God, I'd like to preach on how true he is. And in righteousness. I just don't believe in war. 75,000 of them marched on Washington, D.C. last night. I, we don't believe in war. It'll make no difference whether you believe in it or not. Right. This war is his righteousness. Right. It's a way of him to cleanse himself. Amen. It's a way of him to reach the world with his righteousness. 
It make no difference. It don't make no difference what you and me think of this war. I can't understand these UPC preachers running around. Uh, some's on this side and some's on that side. I'll tell you what they better do. They better all of them get in this and get on the right side. My God. It's sad when the leadership don't even know where we're going. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, this is important. And in righteousness, in righteousness, what's he do? He judges. I don't believe in judging. <laughs> there's, a, there's so many folks out there don't... You know what? It'd be interesting to find out what some folks do believe in. Every time you see them, they don't believe in this. And they don't believe in that. I don't, that's the way they get it out of their life. You know, I don't have to... I don't have to be responsible to this. I don't have to commit to that. I don't have to do this, and I don't have to do that. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to run into a God that said you did have to. He's righteous, and he, and he judges. Hallelujah. He makes judgment, and he makes war. He makes war. I think our nation is close to falling, if you want to know what I think. Do you know that when the Roman Empire fell, it, that they was using German soldiers to fight their wars? This is no reflection upon the black people. Let me tell you something. I don't think that the black people should fight our nation's war. That's right. I'm not saying they're not good warriors. I've been in with them in the service. They are good warriors. But it's not their responsibility. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, because of certain situations in this, this nation, our black people have joined the army, and they are going to carry the blunt of this war. Over 40% of them. What are you saying, Brother Elder? That's bad when the rich people don't have to fight for their nation. Hello? Well, but it is biblical because it said they'd be eating and drinking and making merry and throwing parties and could care less about what's going on over there. He makes war, people. God makes war. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's said here, his eyes are a flame of fire. You know, I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just using myself for an example. But I can tell you one thing. If you don't believe it, you ask my wife, you ask my married kids, you ask my kids in my house. They can take one look at their dad's eyes and they know when to shut up and when to get out of the way. There's some folks, he, he's really a man to haul off and hit an older woman. But when I hit him, he's going to wonder when his feet's going to come back down to the ground. I'm going to tell you something. My family knows by looking at my eyes. I'm going to tell you, the Bible said his eyes are a flame of fire. He's mad. You understand? You understand he's mad? You understand he's angry? He's not liking all these people running around saying, well, God, God's a merciful God. God, God, don't care how much you sin. God loves homosexuals too. Yeah, he loved them so much he rained fire and brimstone upon them. You ought to go over to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah where it still is and see how much he loved them. I've been there. Not even yet today, and how many thousands of years ago? At least six. 
Not even yet today, one blade of grass grows there. That's how much he loves them. It's all black rock from where he burnt the place up. That's how much he loves them. I'm telling you, God, some folks got God loving everything. Uh, you better find out God don't love everything. God is God. And he's, he's mad. His eyes fly up, uh, his eyes are a flame of fire. And, and in the book of Ezekiel says, his fury flies up in his face. Hallelujah. And said here, his eyes are a flame of fire and his head wears many crowns. Because <laughs> he's king of kings. Ain't no king going to whip him. And he has a name written that no man knew but he himself. Mm -hmm. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in honey and gold and love. He's got a vesture dipped in love. Huh? What's his vesture dipped in? Blood. You know how you get blood on you? Well, go hunting with me sometime and I'll show you. I skint some deers out this year, and I'm sure glad there's a running creek close by. His vesture is dipped in blood. And this is not deer blood. It's going to be blood of humans till it flows four feet deep, 75 miles long, and 18 and a half miles wide. I've been in the Valley of Megiddo. I've got pictures of the Valley of Megiddo. Hallelujah. Shepherds walk and talk on the sides of that valley right now. If I could get you over there right now. I bet they're really talking about now, Sister Elder. They see it more clearly now than they did when you and I was there. They walk on the sides of those hills right now. And they'll tell you the horribleness that's coming to this valley. And these big smart aleck human beings on these talk shows in this nation is talking all of the people out of it. Oh, that's just a story. Oh, you can't, you can't rely on that stuff. Oh, oh, I can't hardly wait to bless God. Then people are running and hiding for themselves for all the lies they told the people. Amen. Praise God. We're going to see how great Dan Rathers is one of these days. Praise God. His vesture is dipped in blood. And his name, I'll tell you what his name is. His name is called the Word of God. Amen. Right here, this thing, you know, you're supposed to make fun of and laugh at. His name's called the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? The stone that's cut out of the mountain. That's what I'm talking about. The stone that's cut out of the mountain. What are you preaching on? The destruction of the nations. Right before I sign off, I'm going to give it to you. Praise God. I've got a kind of a late start this morning. I want to talk a little bit about the mountain. Turn to Revelations, the fourth chapter. This mountain gets me excited. There's a mountain right now in the world, and the world don't even know it. I had uh, I had a choir on singing for me before I come in to the sanctuary in my study this morning. I can listen to that choir by the hours. All they're doing is worshiping God. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. That's one of the songs they sing. Great is God and greatly to be praised. Man, I'm telling you, they, they got that thing. It's just one worship song on God after another worship song on God. Do you know what the church is doing today? Uh, so some folks say, yeah, I know what the church is doing today. It's running around sinning. It's running around with a long face. It ain't any better shape than I'm in. No, you ain't never seen the church. 
You just seen some folks that go to church. They're not in the church. It would be nice if you found the folks that was in the church. They're, they got a happy face on. It don't make no difference if there's death in the family. They got a happy face on. That's right. It don't make no difference if they lost their car. They got a happy face on. I'll tell you something. I've lived through this and I can testify about it. Don't make no difference. If their house catches on fire and burns everything up, they still got a happy face on. Amen. I live the example to you so I can preach it. Because my joy is not house and furniture and land. And my joy is not a Lincoln Town car. And my joy is not a motorboat. And my joy is not a motorcycle. And my joy is not a house. Or I mean a horse. Uh, and my joy is not a great big farm with ponds full of bass on it. You, you just, you better find out what makes me function. When you get there, honey, you can smile all the while. Hallelujah. And I'll tell some of you something that's trying to get some of that stuff. If you'll get yourself wrapped up in Christ Jesus, you'll get more than you know what to do with. Because it said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, he'll add all. But a lot of folks go at it backwards. They go after this, 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 wreck their health. At the end of the road, they say, oh my God, I messed up. And I'm too messed up to straighten up. And so they go to hell and they never did get it. I don't tell you what. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What are you talking about? The mountain. I'm talking about the mountain. I'm, I'm part of the mountain this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Revelations 4 and 8 this morning. Uh, I'll show you that I'm part of the mountain. Uh, Revelations uh, 4 and 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like in the crystal. And in the midst of the throne around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. A lot of folks don't know what these four beasts are. But it's no strange thing to me. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was a calf, and the third beast had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying angel. Ain't none other than your preacher and your evangelist standing in the pulpit. That's who it is. That's right. He comes to you with the pure natural face of a man, but sometimes he comes in here when he gets through, you're flying with the eagles. Praise God, because that night God gave him the feast, faith of an eagle. <laughs> and in faith he left you soaring where eagles soar not where turkeys roar but where eagles soar hallelujah but other times you come to church he ain't nothing but the ox that's treading out the corn plowing Woo. praise God and don't never let nobody kid you. The message he preaches is the king of the beast. There ain't no wild, foul spirit out there that can overcome the lion. He's talking other, no other when the four beasts are around that throne of the apostolic ministry. Praise God. So anytime you heard the preacher preach last night about the man of God, you better listen real close. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's got more place than you ever dreamed of around that throne. Praise God. And listen. It goes on in the beast. Give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat upon the throne and worship him that live forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. The four and twenty elders. That's the twelve major prophets of the Old Testament. A lot of folks say we don't have paying attention 
to the Old Testament. There's going to be 12 prophets there to remind you you did. And the other 12 is none other than the apostles who are the foundation of that city. That's your four and 20 elders. I'm talking about the foundation apostles. Hallelujah. They're there to meet you. This book was not written. Uh, somebody said to me in this revival, oh, just a bunch of men wrote this book. That's right. A bunch of men wrote it. And I'm going to tell you something. At the end of the road, that bunch of men's going to be there to see what you did with it. You're going to have the apostolic ministry there to judge you and you're going to have the 12 major prophets of the Old Testament and the 12 foundation apostles of the New Testament all there to judge everything that comes. And getting out of it, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. What are you preaching on now, Brother Elder of the Mountain? The mountain. The rock that came out of the mountain and hit the foot of that image and destroyed that image. And a lot of you, you, you folks are going, some, I can even tell by the spirit I'm feeling coming up here right now. Well, I'm going out here. I ain't paying no attention to this stuff. It's not going to bother me. It ain't going to affect me. I'm going to go right back off out there and I'm going to get myself all wrapped up in all that stuff. And then, no, it's going to change you. It's going to affect you. You ain't getting down nothing. Hallelujah. Listen here. The fifth chapter and the eighth verse. And when he had taken the book from the four beasts and from the four and twenty elders, he took it because we're going to know what to record. Before the Lamb, having every one of them hearts and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Don't let nobody ever kid you. God loves his saints. Does he ever more love his saints? Ooh, not even one hair comes out of their head, but what he don't know about it. And they sung a new song. <laughs> you know what that new song is? Some folks try to tell me this is angels. Craziness. You know what that new song is? I'm redeemed by blood divine. Glory, glory. He is mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the saints are saying, and I'm redeemed by his blood. They sing a new, the angels couldn't sing that song. I'll tell you something else, the Old Testament saints couldn't sing that song. But this bunch comes in singing, I'm redeemed by blood divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. Hallelujah, praise God. They're singing a new song. They never sang this song in heaven. They never sang this song in the Old Testament. Praise God. David never wrote this song. Hallelujah. Songs of Solomon never recorded this song. This is a brand new song that's never been sung through the ages. What are you preaching on? The mountain of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you it's a mountain too. Said God by thy blood and out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation has made us to our God kings and priests and we shall reign over the earth. I haven't talked to Brother uh, uh, Wilson about that yet, but uh, that's interesting because that's on the millennial earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was, oh, it's easy to figure up. That's real easy to figure up how many's in this. I've had a lot of folks say, well, that's real easy. That's so many millions, you know. Hey, you put this on your computer and keep hitting it. 10,000 times 10 thousands of thousands. So you hit 10,000 times 10 thousands of thousands of 10,000 times of 10 thousands of thousands. Sounds like a mountain to me. Sounds like a pretty good sized mountain to me. Some folk think just a little old handful going to get in there. It is just a little old handful full out of every generation. I mean, you know, you figure the church in its broad entirety is probably bigger than it's ever been, but you figure the population of the earth that's always bigger than it's ever been, and we're still 
just a few. And Jesus said, bless a little flock. Few there be that get in. Few there be that get in. What are you talking about? The mountain of God. I'm going to close here this morning. I'm just going to quote some of these things. Daniel said, and the stone hit the image in the foot and break it into pieces. Broke it into pieces. Do you understand that Daniel's not talking about some guy's dream? He's talking about the nations of the earth. He said it broke it into pieces. And I come to you this morning to let you know that the destruction of the nations has begun. We'll see how unscathed we get out of this. You better keep your eyes on two things. You better keep your eye, number one, on Israel, what she's going to do next. Everybody would like to know what in the world is Israel going to do next. Because I can tell you she'll get the job done that us pansies can't get done. But it's going to make old Mr. Russia mad. And let me tell you something. We have drawed and drawed and drawed and drawed and reactivated and drawed and reactivated and all kind of stuff to get 420,000 warriors over there. And I want to tell you that right now, while you sit on this pew, Russia has a three million man standing army. better watch for two more nations and see what they're going to do. And this is the beginning of the beginning of the beginnings of the beginnings of the end. Praise God. You're seeing God now. He has put up with them laughing at him. He has put up with them scoffing at him. But it's all over. The party's over. Now I'll just hit Three prophecies going right now, okay? I'll just hit, I've been trying to stay in tune with them from one side of the country to the other. They say we're not in the battle of Gog and Magog right now. Well, that's pretty clear, but let me tell you something. We say that we got to get Iran into this before we'll have Persia into this, but I want you to know that the Bible speaks of Persia in the days of Babylon, which makes Iraq Persia. Iran is Persia too. They're both part of the old Persian Empire. But hear this. It's been on your radio several times this week and it was in last week's Times magazine that Iran has said if we make Iraq too weak, they will come in and fight against us. Whether you know it or not, Saddam Hussein is a Sunni Muslim ruling Iraq, but 70 some percent of Iraq is Shiite Muslims, which is none other than the Muslim Khomeini was. And they're going to fight for their Shiite brethren. We'll see where we go to from here. But somebody popped up this week and said, but this is not going to be the battle of Gog and Magog. This is the 13th chapter of Isaiah coming to pass. So I studied the 13th chapter of Isaiah this week. So if we get out of Dunscaf, like the 13th chapter of Isaiah says, most will still hear this. The 11th verse says, I will punish the world. He said, I will lay low their haughtiness. This is God speaking. Run to every passage of scripture you can get to now. 
We'll see how you get out of God's snare that he has set for the world. I want to ask you something. Are you riding on this ball of mud this morning? Evidently, you're part of this world. In the 13th verse, he refers to his wrath. He refers to his fierce anger upon the earth. Not Iraq. Babylon is mentioned here as the one that starts all this stuff in the first verse. Amen. And calls armies from afar off. But I want to tell you in this we meet up with the wrath of God and the fierce anger of God upon the earth. The earth. I'm talking about the destruction of the nation. Hallelujah. In the 20th verse, he says there's an earthquake like the earth has never known. I'd like to see him put that on the Richter scale when he shakes things so hard over there that the Mediterranean Sea opens up to the Persian Gulf. I'd like to see him put that on the Richter scale. I bet that'll bounce it around a little bit. You can worry about California all you want to right now. I wouldn't want to be living over there. They just get them up to six in California. In case you don't know it, Europe and in that part of the country of Russia has already recorded them in the last two years over nine. It's bouncing things around pretty good. My boy was in L.A. when they had that bad one. Said his trailer bounced across the parking lot like he's a rubber ball or something. Praise God. Where you gonna run when the world's on fire? Is you gonna run? I'm telling you. It's all going to blow over in another month or two or three, and then we're going to live happy ever after. And we'll have taught them Iraq in something they won't never forget. We might not forget it either. Praise God. God's mad, people. So I'll just talk to you a little bit about the 13th chapter of Isaiah. Well, we'll jump over to 38th chapter and 39th chapter of Ezekiel. We'll talk about the battle of Gog and Magog. And the 18th verse says, God says, my fear shall fly up in my face. And he said in the 19th verse, it's a fire of my wrath. In the 20th verse, he said, the greatest earthquake of the earth that has never been known. So much that the armies are just swallowed up in it. I'm telling you what, them armies don't know it over there, but them armies are standing on some shaky dirt. Not on that this time, he said, I'm going to rain down fire. If you don't think God can rain down fire, I would highly suggest that you get yourself some money gathered up together and get yourself over to where Sodom and Gomorrah is and take one good look at what God does when he rains fire down out of heaven. I've been there. I've got a black rock in my study. I can show you what it looks like over there. God said, I'm going to rain fire out of heaven. I'd like to know how in the world you're going to take care of you, you, you folks who ain't never been in the military service. You got it made. You just sit here. You can't even understand what God's talking about anyhow. But when you, you've been out there on the range, brother, 
Roger like we have, you know, you and artillery and me and heavy weapons infantry and all that stuff, and we stack piles of ammunition together, and you guys stack bags of powder together so you can fire them guns and God only knows what kind of propellant they're using in those missiles out there to get them started off the ground. But I'm telling you folks that you don't understand that this stuff is very dangerous stuff to play with. I mean a lot of guys get killed that never got shot. I've had a tube I've had a duck go down the tube and had to fish a quick head out of it. I'm telling if you miss that quick head when it comes out of that tube, your history, the whole pit's gone. Can you imagine fire coming down out of heaven, touching all that glory? You ain't never been to the 4th of July like this. Oh, this is such a fairy story and a fairy tale that we have to walk out of church after the preacher gets through like we did the day that Ezekiel got up and he said, and there was a wheel, and the wheel was full of eyes, and there was a wheel in the middle of the wheel, and there was four faces, the face of an ox and an eagle, and all, and all the folks went home from church and said, man, that preacher went nuts. You should have heard what he preached this morning at Sunday school. So the best thing to do is call this an allegory or a theophany and let's all go eat dinner today and forget about this. I'm telling you, the destructions of the nations have started, folks. And if there's, if there's any time, you better get yourself ready to meet God. You better get in this revival. And if you've got any friends you want saved, you better get them in this revival. And if you've got any mothers you want saved, you better get them in this revival. And if you've got any brothers you want saved, you better get them in this revival. And if you've got any children you want saved, you better get them in this revival. God's eschewing people in his church right now while he can. You know why he's eschewing them in his church like he can right now? Because he's fixing to take them out of here. And then you're going to see some more war. Because when he makes war with the nations... If I read the Bible and I understand the Bible any at all, this thing could turn out to be something else. This thing could could turn out that in a matter of a few more months, weeks, days, years, however long it's going to last, that at the end of it, Russia sees that we're so weak, she starts to move in to take the spoils because Russia is broke. She needs everything. And when her and old Germany starts moving in, God gets mad because it goes into their heart to take over Israel. And right there, God nails their hide and breaks the back of the Russian army and the German army and all the other armies has had their backs broke but if I read the scriptures right in the book of Daniel when the Russian army and the German army's back is broken out of them comes a man full of deceiving wonders God's moving the nations in for the final thing, folks. Whether you believe it or not, he's moving them in. He's moving them in. He said, I told you I wouldn't play games with you, and I meant what I said. Praise God. He's faithful. He's true. And you can talk about Israel and how tough she is all you want to, but this Bible said they got some terrible days ahead of them. Abomination of desolations. 
they're going to run to a place that God has made in the rock for them. Amen. What are you talking about? God is going to humble every nation in the world till men on this earth is ready to turn to a living God. Praise God. I'm telling you that you better get yourself in the church while you got time. Somewheres, somewheres in the midst of all of this, God takes his church out. Somewheres in the midst of all of this, God takes his church out. I don't mind telling you I'm re- I'm happy. I'm excited. You can I, I, it's all over. I heard of uh, some 20-some thousand uh, protesters in San Francisco last night and uh, said that they had placards running down. And if I was them people, that's probably what I'd write on one too. says, I'm afraid. The way they've been living over there for the last few years, that's what I'd write on my postcard. I'm afraid. I never did see a homosexual that I've ever, and I have worked with them. I never have seen one of them that wanted God to intervene on his situation. The only thing that guy can do is repent of his nasty self and get himself straightened up with God. Amen. God is a total challenge to his way of life. Amen. And if I was him, I'd be afraid too. That's what I'd write on mine. I'm afraid. Amen. I don't know what they had written on theirs over there in Washington, D.C. I'll tell you something. This peace movement is out to overthrow the world. Not this nation. The world. The whole world. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. You can get scared. You can be wandered. You can do all those things. But if you've got anything in you that has uh, any stability of, of intellectual wisdom at all, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to run into the true church of the living God and you're going to repent of your sins. You're going to get yourself baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get yourself full of the Holy Ghost and, and start saying, bless God, whatever you want, Lord, and whatever you want, preacher, do it. Hallelujah. I, all I want to do is get in the rapture. I want to get in. Hallelujah. I don't want to miss the trip. Praise God. I wonder how many of you don't want to miss the trip this morning. I don't want to miss that trip this morning. Somebody said, I can make it another way. Yeah, that's what they said when Noah was here. I can do it another way. And it wouldn't even be surprising to me. I've never found it in history, but it would surprise me if I found in history that some of them believe Noah's message so much they built them some boats. They said, well, it's probably going to happen. We'll build us some boats. We don't have to float with Noah. But I want to tell you something. Noah's boat was the only one that float. There was one door. There's only one God. There was one way. There's only one faith. And there's only one baptism. Hallelujah. And there was only one window in it. And that window to see any hope at all, you had to look up, which means you had to see God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something this morning. It's time for us to get ourselves in the truth. In the truth. In the truth. In the way this morning. Let's stand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we're not too busy to pray for you this morning. You want to come to this altar this morning. It's certainly, definitely always in order to come to the altar. Amen. Your salvation is more important than any piece of our business today. Praise God. Amen.
Amen. It's more important that you're ready to meet God right now than it is that we do anything else. Praise God. Let's raise our hands this morning and love the Lord. Hallelujah, God. Somehow reach out to us this morning. Reach out to us this morning through the Spirit and the power of God. Daniel said, Daniel said, God is going to make a kingdom. I want to ask you something this morning. Are you in that kingdom? Are you in that kingdom? That, that's your help this morning. That's your help this morning that you're in that kingdom. That's your hope this morning that you're in that kingdom. It's that kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is among men, that's going to be resurrected to the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The altar's open this morning. The altar's open this morning. You want to come? We want you to come. Hallelujah. Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Oh, come and be baptized into the body. I'm forevermore abide. Oh, are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Oh, come and be baptized to the body. And forevermore abide. Oh, are you in the church? Triumphant. The altar's open this morning. You want to come? Come now. You want to come? We want you to come. The Lord wants you to come. God's not willing that any should perish. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body. And forevermore abide. Oh, Lord, this morning in Jesus' name, we ask, Lord, that you draw these people into thy presence and into thy kingdom. My God, through the Holy Ghost this morning, the powers of Jesus Christ, let not these souls rest, Lord, till they come into thy kingdom, we pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit them into thy hands that the angels of heaven would come forth, minister into their homes, minister to their minds and spirits as they rest upon their beds, my God. Lord, that you would come, Lord, and draw them into thy fold, Lord, before it's everlasting too late. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Uh, oh, Lord, reach out. Reach out in a way we've never known or seen or understood. Uh, hallelujah, as you draw these people to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.